think those are similar, right? I mean, the right. drug base, you might be looking for the detail. You, you might be. Um, I tend to think of the user who comes in and my doc just ordered, you know, prescribed me a new drug. All right, so this yeah. is the first time gotcha. You know, and then, yeah. you know, and then here's a drug I either know about or have been told about or my mother's been taking for years or, yeah. you know, and something new has come up that made me want to know a whole lot more. You know, is this purple rash because I'm taking X? You know. I guess I'll, I will hear my phone or one of these. Geez. Or I love this drug and it's costing me. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking for an alternative. Yeah. Okay. Either because of cost reasons or what? Is there a reason why people would want to take a different drug? Um, usually people? side effects. You know, can't swallow big pills. Um, you know, want to take one once a day instead of four times a day, um, hate the way it tastes, you know, if it's a liquid or, um, you know, want something that doesn't need to be refrigerated because I go backpacking. Uh, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase that. Side effect issues, uh, cost related, like alternative drug issues. And so if we have, yeah, we could just kind of fill this out. Um, maybe on their, what, what we know about them or what we're anticipating we know about them to help us shape and then kind of have solutions that, uh, from this, like a novice that knows nothing, what kind of tools would we, how, how are we going to give them the information that they need? And it needs to be simple because if we produce, here's this, here's this, here's this, here's this, we're creating a lot of confusion for them. So what's... You know, on this one, what are some simple solutions? As we move through, either move through these, we might say, what tools are they going to need? What what might they, you know, need as they go? And that'll help us shape kind of a, a solution framework, what we're looking at. Um, so if not, this knows nothing other than what we got. If you know your condition and you're looking for drug info, are you looking... Um, all our data is going to have costs, so we can kind of just anticipate that we don't need to label those things. Um, are there things that, if you're only searching, if you only know your condition, that may be helpful to you when searching for the drugs that you're looking for? Like, uh, we can use asthma. I have asthma. Uh, probably interested in, I'm looking for drugs, maybe the side effect information will come from the drug return if they search for asthma on their condition. What, what's coming up right now? Like if you search, if you search for asthma right now, or something, if you're doing a condition-based search, what do you get back currently? Is it that table, the long table of drugs? The big long one? Drug name. Drug name, the 30 days, and then the cost, the 30 day cost. So you get the big long table? I'm not sure how FDB basically provides that, or we, I, we actually do that mapping ourselves, right? Um, we make use of their drug data, their DXID mapping, to present whatever we chose, to, you know, but I don't know what we've done to tweak that or filter it. And yeah, we, we map the health topic ID. Except one of the things we do know about the novice in some cases yeah. is if they're allergic to something. Okay. And um, unfortunately, as far as I know, health concierge doesn't take that into account at all, nor does medication advisor. Okay. Um, except that you can click, I think, a medication advisor. Now, is this built into their profile? Um, yeah, they, they have to have. When they fill out their. Uh, so um, when we say they're a novice, on I'm, I'm I'm just I'm thinking mentally that they're a novice to health concierge, but they may yes. not be a novice to our portal. Okay. Absolutely. Is there? Okay, that's I'm calling, I'm calling that big long table. I'm referring to it as the big long table. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of the big long tables. <laughs> is there anything else that we know when a user comes in? Is there anything else we, we know? Their know about age, that? their gender. Um, 
what other drugs they might be taking. Do, have any, do we know other drugs they we might, might be taking? We might have that. Yes. Do they fill up a um, personal health record of some sort? Um, they can either fill in, uh, they can do self-entry of a personal health record, or if their um, their uh, portal supplier <laughs> is uh, signed up for it, they may have some of their claims records have been imported already and, and are, you know, in their records. So it just depends on if they're truly novice to the portal or whether they've been using right. the portal for a while but are just now coming into health concierge for some reason. Okay. Yeah. So these things that we might know about them can shape what we're giving to them on their first spot. <laughs> so that might help move them down the line very quickly. Uh, and we do, the assumption of this is that they're coming in here for drug related information. So Kind of some of the solutions we can think of is how can we use some of the pre-populated information that we know to provide them with a nice quick snapshot of can we take them from novice to detailed drug? You know, if we know some of the drugs that are on, here here's what we know. Can we do alternatives and stuff like that to do suggestion-based uh, searching rather than kind of what I'm avoiding are is building the better drug <laughs> list. You know, can we do something? We're going to have them, and we're going to have the search, and we're going to have we're going to those, I think. I don't think we can leave those behind. It's kind of up to you guys, especially from the yeah. tech side. If I, may, I mean, what, what do we think in a person who doesn't know anything will come to look for drug information for? What, 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 what's the reason? I mean, if they know their condition, then their phone, they're a different. Right. If they know their drug, then their phone, they're a different. What is a person that doesn't know anything? How do they, they don't know, know what how do they even know? know, <laughs> know. Right. right. No, I, I agree. Um, I think it's just these are more is a <laughs> this is our blank slate because more than likely, yeah, they're gonna Those be in here. Well. You know, this is this is your fringe case, that's your fringe case. Mm -hmm. Most of our people are gonna sit right here in this search, and that's kinda how we have the have what we have, you know. Um, so. I pulled up on the other production system, Belmont. So here's medication mm -hmm. advisor. If you search by asthma by the condition versus the actual drug itself, and then health concierge and other tabs. So if you want to flip back and forth between them, you want to reference those and look at them. We can look at them. Yes, if you want to reference that, you can flip it back and forth. Or tell me to, and I will do it. Oh. So either way. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Feel free, because I think you guys have a better understanding of the tool sets than I do. I'm pretty new to the special medical advisor. I have not been on that project yet. And Luis is very new. So ours, yeah, are, some of our stuff it. is just <laughs> gathering information for how it works. So, um, this lets, as we do this, this will let me know, here's conditions we can do, here's what we can do. <coughs> and then when I look at it, we can create an actual, some type of sketches and stuff that then we can hash through those. Um, If, okay, I'm going to jump to this one. If, if we know drugs and we search for a drug, a specific drug name, that comes up with the drug and then alternative drugs. Is that what was underneath it? The table and then the alternative tables underneath? Okay. And Seth, I just want to, to give you all a warning. Um, I counted eight different terms that we use um, that mean here's some more drugs that we talk about when we talk about our okay. primary drug, um, and they are all defined very slightly differently. So one of the tasks we have to come up with for y'all is to actually tell you what the data tells you right. about, um, we have all, we're have we using the words alternative, therapeutic class, drug class, also indicated equivalent, related, um, medication class, other forms, other, and categories are the 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 lists of drugs that are not your drug that show up. <laughs> okay, are those do is that list? Do we have that list because they each mean something different, or is it just through time? Many of them mean actually something slightly different. Okay, in the data. so they are needed. Um, but nowhere in the UIs are we clearly making the distinctions necessarily. 
Okay. Uh, you, it, it's my experience as somebody who's clinically trained um, that if you look at the list, you can figure out what that means. Yeah. But I'm not sure what people who don't know what that list is, what they think about it when they look at it. Right. Right. You know it because you're. Yeah. You had the training. If someone else just. So just. Because I wouldn't. Com- if there's a difference between related and alternative. Yeah. You know, which there's. I can see that. Yeah. But. But we just need to be careful, and that's a sort of a side discussion that we have to have. But. Okay. So, um, you know, when we when we write these kinds of things down, um, we just need to be really careful that, yeah. that we think, recognize that, you know, alternative may not really be the one we want to show. Right. If I, if I use it wrong up here? Well, see, I don't, and I haven't sorted out which ones are which, so okay. I can't even tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So at least we know that's up there is something. So. Um, did you do a drug again? Yeah. Go ahead. Does it make sense for us to try to come up with those? I mean, we could be using ten different terms, but there might be in reality only two or three different ways or different. Right, and I, I couldn't. It's been so long since I've looked at the the actual data underneath, and I okay. also so haven't. Not... I haven't actually looked at the UI and found all the ways those terms are used. Um, so it may really only be two different things uh, okay. going on under there, but I, I can't tell for sure. Just by what I was looking at, we were seeing different lists every time, so I'm not I'm not real sure what's going on. Is there a glossary or that the user can go and get a description of what these are? Or? We don't traditionally we have not used um, user helps in any of our UI products. And, <laughs> and that's it. Okay. So from from this, if we can I think this kind of gives us a some and not just the, not the returns, but kind of our four four stakes, and we can have more if we come up with them with more. But these are kind of our stakes that we're going to have to, to kind of address when we go. Okay, what are we doing? Is, that, is there any like a random state? If it comes up, we'll add it. Um, so from there, then it's we can build kind of a requirement. Like if we have a page, what requirements are we going to need? For them. Right now, I think we satisfy them with the search table because uh, we have the condition search, drug search, and then category search. Um, do we know of any outstanding improvements right now that we, from a from a data side that we can do? Well, I think that you mentioned one, right? If we if we just limit it to medication advisor, it's kind of like an assumption right now. I think that you will only be able to search for drug names. Okay. Like not condition based or anything, just drug names. Just drug names. Okay. Or is this my assumption? <laughs> but I think that we should, that's the part that we is might that, need to explore to expand it so that yeah. you can search for a drug by condition. Wait, could we, only by drug or drug and condition? A or condition, yeah. Okay, but if we're, if I am understanding our health concierge light that we're calling it right now, it's going to be health concierge with just less information. Right? Exactly. But, so. but that, the, the way we have, so there's only a, so many data sources that back health concierge. Gotcha. One of them is uh, FTB, yeah. which is only today drug names. Okay. And we're saying, so we also have uh, health topics, which is the condition names. We're saying gotcha. you're only going to look at FTB. Okay. Which Today means just drug names. Uh, what Keith also mentioned is, well, FDB also has a good list of conditions in the condition FDB. names okay. that you can use to search for drugs. But it's not the same. Right, it's not the same it's as the what same we have. Health 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 yeah. So if we make a distinction that that table is going to drive health concierge life, that's, that's what that's we That's something new, yeah. I mean, and that's. And I think it makes sense. But what about? No, I guess that's. I think it's about the one. Does that? Yeah. Does that work <laughs> when we go yeah. to health concierge? Well, when we move, yeah. When that's we move, yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep moving on. Because the then we're doing a separate product again that has separate updates, right? Like, are we, are we trying to roll this all into one solution that we 
update in one slot only. It might just be a technicality, but it's again the data source or right. the experience for the user when you take Help and search the whole picture. Yeah, 